I'm Jonathan Yeo, and I've been doing portraits for most of my life. I get to paint some very interesting people, but still this commission from the Royal Society was a particularly exciting one. The South American Rainforest. When St David's series Life on Earth came out, I was about 10 years old at school and it was a complete game changer. You know, suddenly you had the, the, the kind of stuff you were learning at school came alive. There are some four million different kinds of animals and plants in the world. This is the story of how a few of them came to be as they are. It's rather lovely that actually the same excitement I felt and I remember from learning from him hasn't diminished at all. If anything, it's increased. There's some people who turn out to be quite different from their public image, you know, and sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. But that's not the case with him. He's very much what we've seen of him and what I imagined him to be was very much who he is. He's amazing company. Still has that sort of journalist's ability to recall details of stories many years later. It can be a bit distracting because you want to listen to what he's saying, but you're trying to do two things at once. One time he was reading the names of all the artist books on the shelf from a distance, which I was kind of impressed with anyway. But then you started telling me about all the artists. So I was like, how, how do you know all that? It's not just the fact you've got a very experienced, wise, entertaining figure in front of you, but also you know that the audience who are you know, going to be looking at this picture in the future know a lot about him as well. And often, you know, I think particularly with him, feel they've got their own relationship with him. What you want with the portrait is to have a sense of that person's presence. And, you know, ideally, it's not just a static image, but it's a you know, living, breathing person that might come out of the canvas and talk to you. And that very often comes from seeing how faces move, basically, you know, how they react to things, how they what they do when they're talking, how their body language changes. All the things we do with our nonverbal communication. What you're trying to do is pick up as many elements like that as possible and layer it into the portrait. So this is one of the early, I very often do a, 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 a one or two test versions. Sometimes they're just drawings. In this instance, I think I was trying to capture the sense of him in mid-flow. And I, I think I realized kind of quickly enough that it was a bit too much of a fleeting moment to be, uh, to work as a final picture because um, the final portrait, you want something that's gonna, you're gonna wanna carry on looking at and that feels like it might be him actually sitting there in front of you. After a few sittings, I realized something he did was um, have it clasp his hands in a certain way and uh, and kind of like rock forward a bit when he was interested, when he was engaged. And so that's, for me, I associate with him being interested and enjoying himself and in communication mode. It gives it a nice sort of tension. You've got a bit of foreground and background, but you have this, above all, this sense that he's, you know, he might be kind of kind of coming forward even more to sort of tell you something that he's, he's excited about or that he's, he's listening to something that you're saying very intently. And I think that little bit of ambiguity um, but definite interest is, is something which you know, really reflected who he was um, to me. The green colour which started off in the studies I did, I remember him saying how much he liked it. Although I hadn't completely decided on that at that stage, I, I loved the idea people might read it as him in a, in a natural setting, which I think was obviously a logical thing to have going on in the picture, but with, without it being as obvious as painting plants or painting trees and that sort of thing. So hopefully it does that all right. He professes a slight confusion about why he is in included amongst all these great scientists. It seems very obvious to me that the reason is that actually, especially at the moment, the, you know, there's such an importance in not just understanding the science, but communicating it. And it's hard to imagine anyone in history who's done more to communicate the importance of the natural world and really to infuse the next generation 
with that fascination and love that he has at such an important time in human evolution. I feel like we may look back on him and what he was doing, what he achieved at this crucial time as having really incalculable historical importance. Mm -hmm.